Merry Christmas and welcome to the High Lawn Baptist Church Virtual Christmas Celebration. Whether you're attending in person or watching at home, we invite all of the High Lawn family as well as visitors and guests to sit back, relax, and enjoy. Feel free to laugh, cry, and sing along. So without further ado, let's celebrate the birth of our Savior, Jesus, who was called Christ. A reading from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everybody went into their own town to register. So Joseph also went up to, from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, to the city of David. Because he belonged to the house in the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. When Mary and Joseph approached the Bethlehem Inn, they were surprised to find that the town had become so crowded and that there was no room for them anywhere. The innkeeper, seeing that the couple was expecting their first child, offered them the only shelter he could, the only place he had left, his stable. That glorious night, there would be angels singing to the glory of God. There would be shepherds standing 
standing watch over their new mother and child. Later on, wise men from the east would present their treasures to the king of kings. But before any of them would hear the first cries of the newborn savior, other gifts would be given by the friendly beasts. King of kings, Lord of lords, Emmanuel, which means God with us, the Savior of the world, who was sent from heaven to bring a new age of God's redeeming love to earth, was not born in a palace. He was not born in anything resembling royal grandeur. 
He was born to a peasant family in a stable in a small town to the south of Jerusalem, just outside the city of David. Yet God sent the Messiah not as a military commander with armies bent on conquest. God sent him as a servant, a teacher, a lowly person who would show us how to achieve extraordinary things through faith. But for now, this child, born into such humble circumstances, would not go unnoticed by those faithful to God. Shepherds and wise men would hear the voices of the angels and see the words of the prophets coming true before their very eyes. Seraphim would keep vigil around him and his family. Later, entire nations would proclaim him as their Lord and their Savior. But for now, his mother Mary would hold him and sing him to sleep. That night, as shepherds and angels approached, that night, as a star guided the wise men and their caravan from the east, the people of Israel were filled with wonder and with questions. Who is this little baby? Who is this little Jesus lying so quietly in a manger? Who is he that the angels should sing his praises and the very stars should announce his birth? That wise men and shepherds, the high and the low, the mighty and the poor, should bow before him. Who are you, child of Bethlehem, son of David? 
What promises do you bring? What hope do you present? What kingdoms will you rule? What child is this? How do we tell the story? Just as the angels were not afraid to proclaim the coming of Jesus, just as the shepherds left the stable praising God and spreading the news, we have to ask ourselves, how do we tell the story? Do we spend time with our children before they tear into all those packages covered in brightly covered wrapping paper? Do we sing carols that speak of Christ and the love of God amid all the noise of the season? Do we even remind ourselves that the gifts we give are a reflection of a gift that God gave to us. We have inherited both the story of Christmas and its witness, a story that has been rewritten by others to include mythical figures and exclude the Savior. But Christmas is really the story of God keeping his promise to bring freedom from sin, freedom from hopelessness, and freedom from death. The gift of Christmas was the birth of the only begotten Son of God, who came to teach, to love, and to ultimately give his life to ransom ours. That's a story we're telling. Oh!
What a mystery that was set before the people of that time. God's certainty in the midst of so much doubt. A newborn Savior born to poor parents, yet destined for glory. The shepherds must have thought, you must be the one we've hoped for, longed for all our lives. The one who will set us free. The wise men must have remembered the words of the prophet Isaiah. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So be our peace, comfort our anxious hearts, and bring hatred to an end. Be our government. Reign in our hearts and in this desperate world in which we live. Be our everlasting Father, our Counselor. Guide us out of the darkness and into your light. Be our Lord, our God, our Savior. Reign in us. One winter's night a long time ago, while I was out wandering around, I saw a young father sitting next to his son, by a far they built on the ground. They were camped out on the edge of a lake, and the night was quiet and still. They were all bundled up in coats and gloves to ward off the winter's chill. They were telling stories like people will do just passing the time away. So I stopped on the trail and sat for a while to hear what they had to say. And they talked about fish and friends and such as they slowly stoked their fire. And they kept talking late in the night and I was about to retire. When I heard the young boy ask his father to tell him the story of Chris Moose Day, well, I'd never heard that story before, and so I decided to stay. And the father, he told of a starry, starry night a long, long time ago when angels appeared to some shepherds in the field as they watched their flocks below. And how the angels told the shepherds to leave and go into Bethlehem town for a baby named Jesus had just been born, so they hurried and made their way down. They followed the trails to the city below and found the new baby there, asleep in a manger in swaddling clothes in the corner of a stable bear. The man told the boy about Joseph and Mary and some wise men who came from afar to worship the child who was sent by God and how they were led by a star. He talked about how little Jesus grew and became a big strong man and showed everyone how to love and forgive and help them to understand. 
that the God who created the heavens and earth is filled with mercy and grace and cares very deeply for each of us here. Then a smile came across the man's face. He said that includes both you and me and everything else on this planet. Why, there's nothing out here in all these woods that God simply takes for granted. He said God cares for all of creation, every boy, every bear, every bee. And when he said that, it really caught my ear, because I knew he was talking about me. And right then was when I first understood what Christmas is all about. It celebrates the day God came down to earth, and I almost wanted to shout. Cause I'd figured God stayed way off in heaven. I'd never heard that he cares, or that he sent Jesus to show us his love, or that he gave one hoot about bears. I'd never heard that story before, so the whole thing was news to me. But the more I thought about what the man said, the more wonderful life seemed to be. And then the little boy and his dad bowed down, and I listened while they said their prayers. And I heard the little boy give thanks for his dad, and the bugs and the bees and us bears. And the father thanked God for his son Jesus and for caring about us so. And then he thanked God for his own little boy as they kneeled in the campfire's glow. And the boy and his dad soon crawled in their tent, so I turned and headed for home. And I kept thinking about what the man said as I walked to my den alone. It was wonderful to hear that the very same God that made the moon and the stars could care so much that he'd send his own son to live on this planet of ours. And I figure if God really likes little bugs and the bees that fly through the air and cherish his people as small as they are, he must really love moose and bears. And Chris Moose means much more to me now than it ever did in the past. And as long as I don't forget God's love, I'm sure that meaning will last. And wherever you are on Christmas night, whatever bright stars you sleep under, I pray this story brings meaning to you and fills your heart with wonder. A reading from Luke chapter 2, starting with verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. For today in the town of David a Savior has been born. He is the Messiah, the Lord, and this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger. And suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth. Peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angel had left them and had gone into heaven, the shepherds, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that's happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen just as they had been told.
Just 